Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to turn your watercolor art into a simple repeating pattern using Adobe Illustrator. Creating patterns is such a great way to utilize your watercolor art and create more resources for selling, such as digital paper packs, collections for licensing, and print-on-demand products. So I'm going to show you my process of making watercolor icons to vectorizing and finally creating a simple pattern in Adobe Illustrator. I'll link all of the resources in the description box below, as well as a link to my full watercolor to pattern class on Skillshare that gives you a more in-depth guide to this process. So let's get started. So the first step to creating your watercolor patterns is making the watercolor elements. I usually choose a few colors and have simple ideas in mind for a few patterns and then just play on the paper and create loose shapes and fun marks. You don't have to be a pro at watercolors, you can really get started where you are and just paint. So for my process, I keep my elements fairly separate and simple in color and design because we will be vectorizing, which simplifies the elements even more. Vectorizing means we are changing the image from raster-based pixels to mathematical paths, which gives you an advantage of creating a pattern that can be infinitely scaled. However, you do lose a bit of the texture and natural look of watercolors. Although that may seem strange, vector-based patterns and images are really standard in the licensing industry, although I will make a future tutorial showing you how you can keep all of the watercolor goodness in your patterns using Photoshop. So after we finish making our watercolor elements, we need to scan the elements into our computer. I'm using my Epson V600, which is a more professional scanner, but prior to this I made all of my patterns using a really basic HP printer scanner and it worked just fine, but the quality of clarity and color wasn't as great. So I'll keep the scanning process simple and show you some basic guidelines to follow when scanning and watercolor work for vectorizing, and it won't matter uh, which kind of scanner you use. Um, because these will be pretty standard things that you'll find among different types of scanners. Okay, so I've already placed my watercolor paper into my scanner and I've opened up my um, Epson Scan 2, which is uh, the application that allows me to change settings and scan the artwork. So on most scanners, um, it'll scan in document mode unless you have um, one that is has a photo mode. So you'll typically see something like document mode and an option, so image type, where you can either choose auto, color, grayscale, or black and white. Now for vectorizing these elements, um, which we'll do once we bring those into Adobe Illustrator, um, you can either choose color and keep the colors that you've painted with, or you can choose black and white and then change the colors of the elements later on. For this video, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to keep the colors that I've already used. Um, so I'm going to keep it at color and then I'm going to change the resolution to 300. And you can go higher if you'd like. I'm just going to do 300 dpi because that's a pretty good standard and I think it's going to uh, give me what I'd like. And I'm going to keep the image format at a JPEG and we can preview it and scan. Okay, so this is going to scan and then I'm going to go ahead and move into Adobe Illustrator and show you the next step. Okay, so I've opened up Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to create a new document. Um, just keep it at 8.5 inches by 11 inches, which is uh, like regular printer paper. So that's a good reference for size when you're creating your pattern. Color mode, CMYK and 300 PPI. Go ahead and click create. You can either go to file place or press shift command P to place your watercolor elements. And I'm just gonna drag it down. And now I'm gonna go to window and I'm going to find image trace. And this is 
uh, the little tool that we use to vectorize our image. So we're going to change these watercolor elements from pixels to a mathematical vectorized paths. So if I just zoom in really quick, you'll see that they scanned kind of blurry and pixel pixelated. The more that you zoom in, you'll see that. Once we image trace it, you'll see that they become really clear paths, clear lines. There's not going to be as much texture and colors going on. So I'm going to grab my image trace and select my image once again. I'm going to now change some of these uh, preset modes. So I'm going to go to mode instead of black and white. I'm going to change it to color. And for the colors, I typically use less than 10. Um, the more colors that you allow um, in your vectorized elements, the more complex your patterns and whatever your designs become. You can use as many colors as you'd like. Um, there are different options that you can use to make your vectorized images more complex, but I like to keep them simple. And for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll probably just use like eight colors. Um, I'm gonna keep paths, corners, and noise the same for now, um, but those, when you play around with those settings, they change like the texture and the grittiness around and like the smoothness of the elements. Um, and then down here in options, we're going to press ignore white. So that's going to remove that white paper background and all that's going to be left are those watercolor elements. I'm going to go ahead and hit trace and that's just going to give you a preview because it won't actually vectorize anything until you expand which i'll show you after but i'm going to hit trace so that we can see it and it usually takes uh, a bit of time okay and so that traced and that was actually a lot faster than i thought it would be and so as you can see i used eight colors that took away a lot of that texture and now there's just a few colors on each and as i zoom in you'll see now instead of those pixels it is just really smooth elements okay so i actually don't mind the way that that looks um I might even make it a little bit more simple. Let's try six and it's going to retrace. Okay, and I, I like that even better because I kind of wanted like the clouds and the rainbows to be a lot less messy with colors. So now it looks like the majority just have either one, two, or maybe three colors each. Okay, so the next step will be to go to object, hit expand, I'm going to press OK, and that finished tracing the elements. So I'm going to exit out of image trace and now unclick and you'll see we have this big block now of these traced image traced vectorized elements, but we don't want them to be in this big block. We want to separate them. So what we're going to do is right click and press ungroup. So now that means that they are all separate, but what that also means is that if I move this part of the rainbow, it is now a separate object from the rainbow. So the way that we now combine is we can use our cursor highlight over what we'd like to become one group or one object, right click and press group. Or you can press command G, or you can use your lasso tool and lasso um, other things. So now I have one little object and I'm gonna show you again. So if I just grab something, it's gonna separate from the object. So it was a little rainbow, but now they're all ungrouped. So I'm going to grab a hold of all of the ones that I want to, together as one single object. Right click and press group. Okay, 
So now I have two rainbows and then you can do that with all of the other objects as well. Um, I'm not going to show you the whole process, but that's pretty much the simple process of ungrouping and regrouping. If you accidentally group something you don't want to, you can just select ungroup and then redo the grouping. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to make a simple half drop repeating pattern. What that means is that the elements are repeated along the horizontal and vertical lines, but the next line, the element is dropped halfway, creating this popular pattern type. So as you can see in my pattern that I've already created, uh, we have all of the sun elements, they're repeating exactly on top and on bottom and from side to side. The only difference is that one of the suns is dropped exactly halfway um, between the top and the bottom and uh, the left and the right. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make this simple pattern type. We're going to go back to our watercolor elements and we're going to create a bounding box for our pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and click the rectangle tool and I'm going to click one time on the screen and select a size. You can make your patterns any size that you would like. Just to keep it simple, I'm going to make it six by six inches and I'll explain why that's going to make this process simple. Um, as we go on. So we need to remember the exact size, six by six. I'm going to press OK. And I already have a color picked out, but if you want to change the color, you can go to your color box and pick any random color or, um, you know, select different colors or use the eyedropper tool and grab different colors. So this is the box that I'm going to be making my pattern along. So for example, with my little um, sun repeating pattern, I have that background box um, that houses that whole pattern. And then I have the pattern enlarged on a bigger box and it shows how it repeats over and over and over again. Okay, so this is a background color that's going to show up. And so that the box doesn't move around, I'm going to go ahead and lock it. I'm going to press Command 2. Now I'm going to um, grab some of my rainbows. And you'll see that when I drag it over, it's behind my box. So I'm just going to highlight all of my rainbows, depending on what I want to use. Right click, go to Arrange, Bring to Front, and now when I drag my element over, it's in the front. So I'm going to keep this simple. I'm just going to use one rainbow. Maybe I'll use this one and to resize. So it's quite small. I'm just going to drag the corner and press shift so that it remains um, the same like dimensions and it doesn't get all wonky. I'm going to make it bigger. Okay, um, now we want it to repeat exactly to the side and to the bottom. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to go down to transform and then move. And remember my square is six by six. So I'm going to make the horizontal, which means across six inches and then the vertical zero. And I'm going to show you uh, this little preview button shows us that it's going to uh, reflect on the other side. And instead of pressing OK, I'm going to press copy so that um, it just copies to the other side and I keep the original one. Perfect. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to select both of them and now I'm going to copy them. Um, exactly on the bottom so they repeat perfectly on the bottom. I'm going to right click, press transform, move, 
and then I'm gonna make horizontal zero and vertical six. So that means it's gonna go six inches down. And then I'm gonna press copy. And it's copied uh, all the way across and on the bottom. And now I just need that half drop to be repeated in the middle. So I'm gonna click on this one, the original one that I used. And you can do it from any side. You can pick any of them. But this one makes it simple. So I'm going to select it, right click, go to transform, move. And now we want it to drop halfway. So it's going to be halfway across and halfway down. So that means horizontal will be three, which is half of six, and vertical will be three, which is half of six. Then I'm gonna copy it. And now it's exactly in the middle. So I've locked that box so that it can't move when I try to select it. I'm gonna go to object, unlock all. So now I can select that box again. So I'm not gonna to touch any of the rainbows, I'm just gonna select the box. And now I'm going to copy this box and place it directly behind the box. So we want two boxes and I'll explain why once we copy and place one behind. The shortcut keys on a Mac are command C for copy and command B, which is placing a copy of the box directly behind it. Now we want that box, the bounding box, to be clear. And the way to make that clear and not have it have any color is to go over to the color field and select um, none. So it's this square with a red line through it. And you can't see it, but that's what's done. Um, because I didn't touch anything else, I didn't move anything else, so the box directly behind it is now um, transparent, it's empty. But we need that box there to create um, this repeating pattern. I'm going to select all of it, and then carefully drag it into my swatches panel. To find the swatches panel, you'll go to Windows, Swatches, but mine is already there, so I'm just gonna drag it and drop it in. And now my repeating pattern is there. Now to test the repeating pattern, I'm just gonna zoom out. I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool and then pick a random size. And then I'm going to click on that repeating pattern swatch that I just inserted. And there is my repeating pattern. Awesome, so I can make it different sizes as well. Maybe I'll do 12 by 12, so you can just see it doubled. Or 24 by 24. Okay, so that is how you make a repeating half drop pattern. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to export this now as a repeating pattern JPEG or PNG. Um, for instance, this is probably the way that you might do it to sell them as a digital paper. Uh, you can also um, export your repeating tiling square and I go into more detail in depth in my Skillshare class uh, about how to do that. Uh, but for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to show you a simple way to export uh, a paper like this. So go to Window Asset Export, and I'm just going to drag this asset in there. And I keep my scale at 300 ppi. I'm going to do my format as a PNG, but there are other options. We're going to go here to these format settings. And for PNG, we're gonna keep it art optimized, super sampling, save settings, and we'll just export. Super simple, pick a place, choose, and then it will export. And I'm gonna open it up. And here is a high quality PNG of the pattern that I just made. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this tutorial was helpful in showing you how you can easily turn 
watercolors into a simple pattern in Adobe Illustrator. There are of course so many different kinds of patterns and I'll go more in depth into the pattern making process in my Skillshare class, which I've linked in the description box below. Be sure to like and subscribe for more tutorials like this one. Thank you so much.